So today our topic is on the partial moment release and its use in the structure. Now, what is the partial moment release? Now to understand this, we have to understand the bending moment behavior. Of course, the bending moment is a very basic topic for the structural engineers. And every one of you must be aware of this as uh, all of us has studied this topic in our engineering school. So I'm not going into much of its explanation and how it is calculated and so and so. But one aspect is very necessary to define it in a simple interpretation, which will help us in understanding the partial moment release. Now, for example, in a cantilever beam, the net load times its lever arm at the end will give you the applied moment at that concerned section. Now, this is not the bending moment. Now, the bending moment is the reactive moment developed to resist the applied moment at the section of concern. So now if we assign the end support as a pinned, the structure becomes unstable. That's because the resisting moment this time is zero and it is unable to counter the applied moment. Now that's very simple. So we could understand that the bending moment is essentially the resisting moment generated at any section of the member due to the force imparted from the rotational strain in the section. So the resisting moment is the summation of the resisting force from the fiber at various layers times the perpendicular distance to the neutral axis. So at one end, they all will be in tension and on its opposite end, they will be in compression to maintain the lateral equilibrium. Now intuitively, just imagine that if there are series of springs on one side, uh, which are under tension, and the spring on its opposite side, which are in compression, and that would ultimately create a couple and it will impart the moment at that section. Now in case of pin support, the member and rotates as a whole, just like a rigid body without having any internal rotational deformation at that specific section. Now let's take another scenario, like when the member whose both the ends are pinned, just like simply supported, and the ends can now undergo certain degree of member and rotation along with the member internal deformation. So here, some proportion of moment is developed at the end with respect to the moment that would have developed if the ends were fixed. So this is the partial moment and the partial moment thus developed depends on the rotational deformation the section undergoes. So in reality, such condition is very usual in most of the real life structure. So practically no joints are ideally pinned. So there would be a slightest of frictional resistance due to the uh, bolt placed at the neutral axis or maybe bolt placed slightly away from the neutral axis, which is slightly resisting the member to undergo free rotation. So this would result in generation of rotational strain and thus the moment. Similarly, no joints are ideally rigid. So there would be some proportion of member rotation at the joint due to the inelastic elongation or deformation of the bolts or the plates or the cleats connected at the top extreme member flanges. So these are some of the illustration of the deformation of the connected components at the joint leading to the member rotation. So this is the graph. So here in this graph, we are representing the ideal pinned and ideal rigid as well as the real pinned and the real rigid connection. So the real rigid and the real pinned are very much close to the definition of partially restrained connection. Now the moment connection is considered as a rigid connection and the shear connection is considered as a pin connection. Uh, I will come to that later in a separate video. 
with the explanation why they are considered so. Now from the graph you could see that the real pin connection experiences some proportion of the end moment due to the frictional resistance. Whereas the real rigid or the moment connection experiences some proportion of moment loss. So the loss is in the sense can be described as if the point I to be considered as the ideal end moment value uh, like this somewhere at here. Uh, this is just like if there is no member end rotation and if another point is to be taken that is the point R which is considered as there is some member end rotation may be due to inelasticity in the connected component in the joint. Then there is a loss of MR minus MI moment. So this reduction or the loss of the moment can be described as the partial moment loss or the partial moment release. Now this feature that is the partial moment release can be defined at any joint in STAD. So in STAD it is represented as MP. So don't get confused with the term MP because in most of the definition MP is representing the plastic moment but instead it is representing the partial moment release. So MP is MR minus MI over MI. Meaning if the MP is zero, the connection is to be taken as ideally fixed. And if the MP is one, then the connection is to be considered as ideally pinned. Please remember the word ideal here. So the value in between will represent partially restrained condition. Now you may refer to AISC 360 code for the codal classification and the representation of rigid pin and the partially rigid condition. Uh, the code says that if the connection is considered to be fully rigid, then it should be able to preserve the rotation between the members. And if the connection is to be classified as simple or pinned, then it rotates without increasing the moment. So the connection stiffness in between these two boundaries are considered as the partially restrained or the semi-rigid connection. So you may want to go to the chapter J and its commentary in the ASC 360 code on moment connection for further detailed understanding. Now instead, this feature is mainly helpful in tackling the instability-like condition in structure. Uh, for example, when we define the shear connection is that we specify the hinge or pin connection, meaning the moments are fully released. Now this could be directly done by assigning the truss specification to those members because truss member is essentially supposed to take only the axial load and it will discard the moment and the shear force. So the truss member in the real life structure is made by providing the pin connection at its both ends. So in some situation, these truss member specification could lead to instability like situation in the structure, which is primarily due to the inability of the applied load reaching its support, which is also known as the loss in equilibrium. So let's see an example. So this is an example on steel frame structure with the roof members assigned with the members truss specification. Now the truss member is same as I mentioned before. Uh, the member having the full member end releases intended to transmit only the actual forces. Now here in the structure, some of the truss system is not allowing the moment to get transferred through some nodes. For example, if there is any lateral load applied on the truss member or maybe due to some other reason, the moments would not find its way to transfer through the joints. So the instability could be either detected from the statics check or by seeing the unusually high deflection value. Uh, you can get those information from the post-processing table instead. 
in practical scenario we mostly get much more complex model than this which is very difficult to investigate and find the exact node or the fixity condition which might give rise to the instability like situation hence in general we first remove the truss specification and then assign the partial moment release of mp value of 0 0.99 and then perform the analysis and see the result now in most of the cases the instability warning goes away but still there could be high magnitude of deflection. Uh, this MP 0.99 means 1% uh, of the moment is allowed to develop in the member end uh, with respect to the condition when the ends would have been completely fixed. That means we are allowing 1% moment to transmit. So we were talking on the deflection. So if you see the high deflection amount and if it is beyond the accepted range you may start decreasing the MP value uh, starting from 0 0.99 to 0 0.98 then 0 0.97 and perform the analysis till we get the deflection within the accepted range but it is suggested not to lower the value beyond 0 0.95 so just try to make it within 0. Uh, up to 0 0.95 if you still get the high deflection value then you might want to revisit the model and want to tweak around in the model to change the load path so this updated MP value that you have assigned after a few set of iteration would indicate that to meet the target structural displacement and the stability we can expect the actual member end to experience the moment and the rotation values that are calculated from the analysis. So indirectly, this MP value indicates that we are somehow tightening the hinge joint so that slight amount of rotational deformation develops at the member end. And this is indeed the practical scenario as the shear connection in reality experiences slight amount of moment at the end due to some static frictional resistance or might be due to the bolted or welded connection slightly away from the neutral axis. In addition to that, engineer can also reduce the full fixity of the joint by using the desired MP value in case he wants to analyze the structure for partially restrained frame connection. So finally, please note that you need to input the MP value very judiciously for the moment connection. That means instead the end rotation or the moment developed would be proportional to your existing load levels on which the MP is calculated. So but in reality, the rotation to moment relationship may behave non-linearly as you can see in this curve so for different loading the moment and the rotational relationship won't be linear hence the partial moment release value might vary with different levels of loading 